Right guys, welcome to the game. Now I'm going to be going through all of the revolutionary options and this is going to take me some while. So hope you guys appreciate it. Please let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed it and what kind of revol revolts you're going to be using. And of course, feel free to drop a like. So let's start with the age two revolts. There are obviously two options for each. So let's have a look into it. So we will go and we'll age up with whatever we want. And then we'll go for the first revolt. So let's have a quick look. We'll do this and then we'll sort of go for a quick pause just like that and have a look at the two options. So the first one is Central America, which seems to be one of the most popular ones uh, at the moment where you get seven settlers. So that's really good because that's a huge boost to your economy. Artillery and forts are available and it's a focus on fortress age utility. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, we shall click Central America. We are revolted to the mother country right now. The main thing that we're going to be looking at is the decks, because if you don't know, when you revolt, it gives you a brand new deck, which cannot be changed. So if we go into here now, you can see our deck has completely changed and you still do have some of the options that you had when you aged up into age two, which will be at the top here, but it will be replaced by some different things. So let's have a look at them and see if there's any unique ones here that we need to make um, a note of or anything specific that may be quite good. Um, let's just have a look at some of the cards. Let's just quickly uh, build a couple of houses. Uh, we want to build a couple of houses. Um, there we go. So we've got some uh, population there so we can actually have a look. So let's have a look here. So we can see that uh, a good card here potentially is seven revolutionaries. Now, seven revolutionaries, very good unit. They have a ranged resist. So they're sort of like heavy infantry with skirm attributes, a very good all rounder and powerful unit to have in the early ages. So this deck could be seen as a quite a good age to aggression deck because you also have a card here called the ironclad, which I covered in a previous video where you mine 500 gold and you get an advanced armored warship by your side. And this can be really good on water maps or maps where there's ponds as well. So little ponds of water close to your enemy. If you can lock them down with an ironclad very early on, that would be absolutely mental. Let's just have a look also at the top here. We do see that we've got our Lady of the Assumption. We've got the uh, Cathedral Wagon shipment here that we can get. We have the uh, Santa Maria's Fire, which ships uh, five Soldados, which are the sort of heavy sort of elite musketeer units and it says you receive a free petard with all future shipments starting with this one so this could be kind of a crazy thing very early on getting a free petard every ship every um every shipment meaning that you can really get on with the aggression and the siege uh, we have salvadorian coffee here ships an additional settler for each shipment you have sent so far this game so that's more of a later game option and we have the uh Katrakos uh, arrives fast. Settlers become revolutionaries when they are defeated. Very interesting. Okay. And we move on here. Villagers' hit points have increased. And we have Chipotle Tactics, which is 500 food and the destroyed buildings, destroying buildings, so it grants you food, including your own. So, you know, what you could do, for example, is you could go for the um, Saldados here. You could get them out. You can get six of those, or sorry, five of them and a Petard. You could start getting revolutionaries. You could start sieging buildings. And then later on, you could go for the Chipotle tactics to get that extra food in, which could be really good for you as well. I'm not too sure what extra food you get. Um, it says it delivers one huge crate of food. Let's have a look. Let's go ahead and delete a building. So that's one of ours deleted. We'll go ahead and get Chipotle tactics and then we'll see how much there is. So there's still only, there's still only 500 food. And that was only one building. Destroyed buildings grant you food, including your own. Now, I don't know whether or not that means... Um, oh, I think that means they're on. Do I get any food? Interesting. So I'm not getting any food for that at all. Um, not entirely sure what that one's about, to be honest. Um, I need to look into that. Let me know down in the comments below if you know what the Chipotle tactics really does. I'm not too sure what it means by that. I thought I would have got food, extra food in that instance, but I did not. So we have a lot of resource crates here. We do have a good old 700, 600 wood. We've got the 700 food and a bunch of coin as well. So you can stay in age two for quite a while, it seems. And you do have access to three outposts here, which is the advanced frontier defenses. You get three outposts and they also are upgraded as well, which is kind of crazy. 
and you can keep getting the additional ones here the for unlimited card option you have town militia you have improved buildings and you have some uh, a good falconet shipment here not bad 100 gold and you get a falconet else so you could get a falconet really early in age two I'm not too sure how good this is. I don't know whether or not going to Culverins is better. I think maybe doing this, this sort of revolution against an FF Euro Civ like Otto's, for example. Ottoman always open up with a good two Falk push at around eight minutes or so, something like that with Jans. If you had this card two Culverins in here ready to go with your revolutionaries, that would be absolutely awesome. So I think there's some application for the Culverin early on. Um, I think the Ironclad's kind of crazy. And this is very interesting here. So you can um, research all veteran upgrades for your barracks units whilst you're in this age. So you've got to remember when you go from age two and you revolt, that is essentially an age three, really. You're sort of doing like a half age three um, sort of transition or age up, you could say. That's how the revolutions work. So if we were to return back to Mexico, which is an option, that would mean that you'd be going to age three. Four, which would be kind of crazy so if i go i want to rejoin your home country it restores your deck and there you go you are now in age four industrial so we skipped an age that's how it sort of works and you get your deck returned back to you with your extra cards as well and also some of the cards from your revolutionary deck will stay with you as well so you'll have a couple of uh special cards from your revolt that you'll be able to utilize like getting some villagers getting some Saldados as well, uh, Sal Saldados or however you pronounce it, right there. So that's the first revolution in H2. Let's have a look at the Barge of California for H2 as well. Okay, guys, let's have a look at the second option for H2 then, which is the Barge of California. Now, once again, same requirements, 300 food, 300 wood, 300 gold. Settlers become filibusters. So we'll have a little look at that and see what they are and see what they can do. You get two post wagons and there's a focus around outlaws, map control and resource trickles. So very interesting. And I've got to say, I don't think this is the best option if you're doing like an age two rush. I think if you want to have more economy and you want to have more stability around your rush, around revolutionaries, around outposts, around falconets, all that sort of stuff, with a Saldados card as well that I showed you. I think Central America is the better bet, but let's have a look at Barger California and see what it offers. So let's go straight into it. We'll revolt and let's just uh, build a couple of houses. Oh, we can't actually do it. Yeah, because they've turned into Philly Busters, of course. So let's have a look at the Philly Busters quickly. So a Philly Buster. So it sort of changes into a, uh, I would say like a heavy um, infantry, not a huge amount of health here, but 24 range attack, significant amount of siege as well. They can still build certain handful of buildings, um, but I don't think they're able to get any resources at all. And um, that's pretty much it, really. They all just turn into filibusters. And let's just have a look at the deck as well. So the deck here. Let's have a look at this revolutionary deck. Let's look at the top first. So we have the Soldier of Fortune. Defeated enemies now also uh, reward coin um, as well as XP. We have a team trickle card here, which is the economic one, which is kind of crazy. So they generate significantly more, more resources. That could be quite good. But once again, trying to pull off a stagecoach. Yes, yeah, so they generate significantly more resources. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of difficult. I'm not too sure about if that's possible. Outlaw combat. Once again, this is centered around the outlaws. So there's a, a big upgrade here. And we have Land of Walker, the inspiring flag when we planted anywhere and causes charge abilities to recharge significantly faster. Let's have a look at the age two cards here. So we have only 600 gold. So you can see here, we don't have a huge amount of resource options compared to the Central America card. So we can see here that we do have a nice factory wagon, however, which is very, very good. And we have three outpost wagons here that can go into outposts or trading posts. We also have um, two of those that we got given uh, immediately as well. So there could be an option here that you could go for some sort of trade route play where you quickly get uh, you build a TP in age one instead of going for a market. So you get one TP. You then get two post wagons when you when you revolt. You can build those. So you got three. And then you could potentially go for a stagecoach or you could go for this card. Or you could just go for a stagecoach so you get three. And then get this team trickle economics, which is kind of crazy. So maybe there is some sort of play that you can do to have that economy. Uh, let's have a look at the other ones here. So we have an unlimited Hacienda wagon. Not the best. 
We have Baja California Territory, so new and existing haciendas, spawn one settler and attract nearby huntable animals to improve production rates. So that's interesting. We're not too sure how much that improves that by. Um, but okay, interesting. Uh, one gold prospector wagon. So it delivers one gold prospector, which can open a gold mine. Um, and I think these gold mines, uh, correct me if Okay, right, so let's have a look then. So we've got the XP available. So let's go ahead and get a Hacienda. And then we'll do this one. New and existing ones attract huntable. So let's go ahead and just quickly put this one down. And let's just have a look and see how much of an increase this is going to be. And they're going to attract um, other ones as well. So we can see that obviously, we'll see what that's giving you. So it's giving you 0.17. So I think that's a very, very slight increase. But I don't know whether that's 100% worth it. Uh, we have the gold prospector wagon as well. So the Philly Busters uh, are able to, with this card, exploitation, are able to gather from mines. And you can see it's 0.3, but 0.6 for settlers. So it's only half the speed. And it seems that we rely a lot on gold. You know, there's a lot of sort of cards here that are really, really gold heavy. We've got the Walker's Gang here um, that we'll get. We also have Capitalism. So we get, that's actually quite a, quite a big trickle there of 1.65. So a very interesting sort of deck, uh, I've got to say. I'm not too sure how you'd utilize this 100%. I think there's obviously, there's got to be some sort of trade replay, okay? So where you get two trade posts, you maybe have one built already or maybe a second. You get the four trade posts on, you get the, um, the trade route upgraded, and then you start to make some sort of... Um, economy from the Baja California option. But that's it, basically. I'm not too fussed about this one. I think the Central America one is definitely a better pick for sure. Right, guys, let's have a look at the age three revolution. So when you do this, you're going to go essentially from age three to age four. And when you want, if you want to return, you have to return back and you'll become the imperial age. So let's have a look at age three and see what possibilities there are. So let's go to the revolt and we have two options once again we have the yucatan which is insurgents become uh yucatecos i mean my pronunciation is absolutely awful hacienda and factory upgrades available and free and we have the focus of hacienda settlers and infantry so definitely more of an economic focus on this one and the rio grande is settlers become revolutionaries military guard upgrades available and free and unit shipments and cavalry. So definitely more of a um, military focus, especially that all your settlers become revolutionary. So maybe this is the last sort of ditch attempt if you are in a bit of a sticky situation in the game and you need to try and get out of it for one last push and one last push back for defense, basically, as, as a sieve playing against someone else. So let's have a look at Yucatan first. So 750 food, 750 wood and gold. Let's go for it. There we go. And what happened was with this one is, it's interesting. So none of your settlers change, but instead you can only start creating revolutionaries from now on. So you're unable to produce settlers from the TC, but your original settlers stay the same. So you still maintain that economy. And let's just have a look at some of the options here. So this was the age two option. This is now the age three option. So you can see here, there's... Um, there's quite a few things here. Actually, no, that's the age three. So this is the one here. So starting from here is the revolutionary cards. So we have Emparo. So settlers spawn quicker and gain significantly more hit points. We have inspiring flags. Now also improves settler gathering rates by 20% and can be placed anywhere on the map you have explored. We have the uh, uh, Hennequin industry. Hassian is now trickle extra resources in all game modes. And the uh, Solace shredders. Hassian is going to toggle that allows workers to gather wood. Let's move on to the main chunk of the deck here. And just having a look, you can see it's definitely more economic focused. We do have a factory. We've got um, unlimited resources here. Very nice. We have eight villagers at our disposal. But do you remember doing this revolution, we are technically in age four. So try and think of the, the level of cards here and how good they are. We do have the insurgents um, that are kind of like an upgraded version of the, um, the peasant unit, the peasant rabble unit that's like the uh, pike unit that we have. So let's move along here and we have the Hacienda wagons. We have a fortified Haciendas. Interesting. We have a good old fort wagon. Uh, some of those insurgents that we'll have a look at shortly. The Saltadors, the good old skirm units that are sort of like jungle prowlers. They have a stealth ability. 
We have the good old Ironclad. And moving on to the Age 4 stuff, the, the juicy stuff. We have Jungle Warfare, um, which means that all your Saltadors, the Insurgents, the uh, Javelineers deal poison damage. Interesting. We have the uh, Ambuscada, which is Saltadors are stronger when nearby natural resources. I don't know how crazy that is. Some people have said that's pretty nuts. Reservis, uh, Reservistas equips all Insurgents with muskets. And we have an Observers here, which is a Saltador range upgrade. Guerrilla Tactics, which is Saltadors once again. And the Mayan Supporters, which is the Native Embassy. And you can ally with the Mayor. Textile Mill and your good old food silos. So an interesting sort of mixed bag here. You know, definitely... Um, yeah, there's definitely sort of... Oh, oh, this I didn't see this one, sorry. Plan of uh, Merida transforms all your settlers into two insurgents. New settlers respawn faster. So it says respawn, but we don't have the option to create any villagers, which is interesting. So let's just um, have a quick look here. Let's just go ahead and do this. We'll just build a couple of buildings so we can start getting them. So let's have a look at the uh, Yukoto insurgents here. And let's see what they're like. So these guys are sort of like the upgraded version of the normal insurgents. They have the lasso effect and the lasso attack does a lot of damage to heavy cav, hand shock infantry, which is your like coyote runners, um, light range cavalry, but not very good at infantry at all. So really, really good against cav. And we've got some hand attack here, um, which is also the hand attacks not bad against shock infantry either. So not a bad mix. You probably wouldn't want them against like heavy infantry, but anything cav related, these guys would be pretty good. They are relatively fast at 5.5. Um, so that's very interesting. And we do have a few upgrades here. For example, uh, we got this one here. So now they all have muskets and we still have the lasso ability, which is interesting. And the ranged upgrade now is just 19. So they sort of become like a musk unit now. So they're still good against Cav. They're still good against Handshock Infantry. But that Lasso there is interesting. Dealing damage and snaring the target. So that's, that's very, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the only way I think, correct me if I'm wrong, to train villagers in this sort of revolution is through your Haciendas. So you'd have to make sure that you have a lot of Haciendas available to be able to do it. And there are upgrades that can increase the rate of the settlers, which is this one right here. So this one is going to be increasing your build time by or reducing it by 35% and increasing their hit points, which is quite significant. So now you can see they're coming in a lot quicker. And you can just get eight vills as well. That's something else you can do. But kind of crazy. In all in all, I think this is quite a good option to go. But I would say that going for this revolution is probably best if you're going for more of a committed age two where you boom a little bit. So you get maybe four or five haciendas. You have a lot of economy. You have a lot of settlers because when you revolt, your settlers do not transform so unless you want them to with a card. So you have the option of that really good economy. You can switch out to this deck. You can get yourself a factory if you want to. You could get yourself some of the Saltadors for a thousand wood. You could get the go for the insurgent play. If they've got a lot of cavalry, you might want to revolt so you can get the insurgents. Um, there's lots of things here that are interesting. Lots of upgrades available. The observers is really good. Lots of Saltador upgrades. So it looks like going the Saltador with the insurgent composition is sort of the one that they're trying to push here with this deck overall. So let's have a look at the next one. Okay, guys, let's have a look at the second revolution option for when you're in age three. And this is the Rio Grande. So settlers immediately become revolutionaries. Military guard is upgrades available and there's the unit shipment and focus on cavalry. So let's have a look. We have now revolted. All of our villages are now being completely upgraded to the standard revolutionaries that we saw in the previous. Um, the Barger California, for example, that was one where all, the, all your settlers changed into revolutionaries. This is very similar. Let's have a look at the deck and see what's available. So we have the Sierra Madre Republic. We're not looking at these because these are the ones that I use to actually age up. So this one ships one settler for each three you have lost so far, up to a maximum of 99. We have the Nuevo Leon Militia. So you ship two additional revolutions for each shipment sent so far this game. 
Very, very good if you've definitely done a lot of shipments throughout the game and it's a, quite a long game. That could be very good for you. Inspiring flags as well. In increased speed. And all settlers transform into revolutionaries again. Interesting. Interesting. So I don't know how many settlers you're planning on having, but that's kind of crazy. And we have a factory shipment. We have eight settlers again. We've got two hacienda wagons. And moving on to age three, we've got leather soldiers. Changes the coin cost of Mexican cavalry and infantry to wood. Liberation march. All infantry and cavalry train train and move faster. It's kind of interesting. 5% move speed. I don't know whether that's really that worth it, to be honest. But 30% build time reduction is very interesting. I don't know whether that's better than fencing school. I'm not entirely sure. Revolutionary 16, we've got a Fort Wagon, we've got an Ironclad again, we've got the Chinarcos, which is like the Lancer Cav that are also good against other melee Cav as well. Dragoons, Nine Saldados. I mean, these aren't amazing if you're aging up, if you're revolting in age three, because primarily you're see seen as an age four sieve at that point. So you kind of want some really hard punching cards. So maybe four Culverins would be quite good. Um, looking at the age four stuff, we have the um, Presidial Lancers, so this is more of the uh, cavalry inspired, as they said. So this is looking at like the Chinarcos a little bit more and also looking at like a Chinarco revolutionary or revolutionary sort of composition, I think. I, that's the sort of feel that I'm getting from this card. So more of like a heavy cav with heavy infantry composition. Kind of interesting. I don't know whether this is going to be a good thing, but once again, it is very all in. You've got to invest in Haciendas before you do this because you have no way of training villagers or settlers at all. Everything transforms into revolutionaries and your only option is to get them through the Haciendas. And as you can see, um, there isn't actually any card here, I don't think, that actually improves the rate of the villagers. So this is a lot more all in than the first option that we saw for this age. So let's move on to the final sort of part of the video where we look at the revolts in age four. Okay, guys, let's have a look at the two options here for the age four to age five revolution. So we have the California option first, and this is a thousand wood, food, and gold. So settlers become Californios or Californios. Cow build limit and work rate greatly increased. And there's a focus around cavalry, ranching, and rebuilding economy. Okay, interesting. We have Texas. Obviously, settlers become volunteers. Train guard, United States units, Minutemen, levies enabled at the town center. And there's a fort infantry upgrade. So what I'm getting, what I'm sort of understanding is, if you're not too sure about the revolts, but you do want to try it, just think the ones on the left, so the first ones on the left, seem to be more economical based and they're not as all in. The ones on the right seem to be more military focused and there's more of an all-in sort of aggression, last ditch attempt. And it sort of throws out a lot of the um, economy out the window and focuses a lot more on the military side. So let's have a look at California first. There we go. We have now revolted and we have a, these, these Californios. So these are the Californios. These are what all your settlers would transform into. So let's have a quick look at the Californios here. And they have a 20% range resist, which is nice. And what are they good at? Are they good at cavalry? They're good at cavalry and light infantry or shock infantry. But standard infantry, not so much. And villagers, not so much. So very interesting. Okay. Health isn't great here, to be honest. Their siege is quite poor. But okay, not the best looking unit, to be honest. But if all your settlers at this point in the game were to advance, you'd have a lot of these Californios. So it may be worth it. Let's have a look. Just uh, do this. Yeah, so the Californios are 120 food each. Nice. Let's have a look at the good old deck here. So let's have a look at the deck. Obviously, these are all the ones that I picked to age up. So we are going to ignore these and just look at the final two here. We have the Californian Gold Rush. Now, this is very similar to the USA. I remember seeing these here. And you have another revolt here. So... Villagers become Californios. Your general gains access to the inspiring bear flag. So there's a bear flag revolt that you can do. So that's a, a secondary sort of revolt that you're able to do. And what it means is um, the honcho, the pet grizzly, sets all action damage bonus against artillery to 0.1. And your general gains access to the bear flag ability. Very interesting. That's a, that's a lot of money. Like, is that villagers become Californios again? Okay, interesting. Ships one gold prospector wagon, and they can instead automatically spawn settlers 
for free. So you kind of probably want to go for this one first if you've got a lot of TCs. Especially that you're going to have a, not a huge amount of economy because you've, you've traded up all your Californios, all your settlers, sorry, for Californios. So that's interesting. So moving on, we've got another gold for spread to wave. We've got eight settlers, a few nice heavy shipments here. So still quite economic sort of, um, what's the word? Quite economically um, guided, you could say, this sort of revolt. Once again, we've got the Hacienda cards that we've seen before. Got the team Panatas, that's very good for more of a team game. And we have the two covered wagons for TCs. We've got the California Robber Barons, so one factory wagon and increases the build limit of them. Moving on, we've got the Liberation March. We've seen that in the previous one where your build times reduced and speed is increased. The Ironclad, the 20 Californios. Oh, we've got the Russian American Company, a favorite with the USA when I was playing them. So two blockhouse wagons. And uh, the gather rate for Huntables has increased as well. We have the San Diego port, which means all dock upgrades are free, but take longer to be researched. Okay. That's sort of like the uh, economy one for the market where everything's free, but it takes a lot longer. We have the recruit uh, ships three, uh, Woku Junks. Interesting. And San Francisco Bay. So a couple of sort of ship cards here. So very sort of sea orientated this one. And we have the Lancers of California. Enables the Imperial upgrades for your stable units to be researched for free. Wow. That is a lot. 4,000 wood, 4,000 gold. Jesus. Probably not the best if you... If you want to do a big cav switch, then maybe that's something that you could do. But I think other than that, I'm not too sure. The uh, Ranchos allows Californians to harvest animals and work at the Hacienda. That's probably very good. That's a good card if you, if you don't want to go really aggressive and you still want to focus on your economy with your uh, Californian horses here. We have the Californian Ranching. Ships two additional semi-fattened cows for each shipment you sent so far. The uh, Barbaco, that fattens livestock a lot quicker. The Californian Haciendas, uh, two um, Haciendas, uh, additional Haciendas, Haciendas, sorry, to be constructed, enables them to automatically gather resource crates. Stockyards. So livestock fattens more quickly, 30%. And a Californian statehood. Ships one state capital wagon. The good old state capital wagon that we know very well from the USA. So let's actually go for this bear flag revolt. Uh, I do not have any shipments available. Nova and Orion. There we go. Let's go for it. So a bear flag revolt. There we go. It's done. Ah, yeah. You get these bears. Okay. So, yeah. So the, um, the card... The flag is, I mean, that, that's actually the recharge time isn't that bad on it, and you get all of these bears. So these bears have 56 attack damage, and they're bonus against guardians. Um, but 56 damage is a lot, and uh, they've got a lot of health, but obviously they've got no sort of armor at all. But having 10 of these guys come at you, very, very scary. And I don't think they've got any siege, so they've just got to take down units. But that's kind of a crazy card. Maybe better for, like, supremacy. Uh, sorry, for treaty rather than supremacy, especially for the amount that it costs. I mean, that is a, a very expensive card, very expensive card. That is that revolt for you guys, the, uh, the California revolt. Okay, guys, we have the final one, the Texas Revolution in Age 4. So this is Settlers Become Volunteers. Train guard units, uh, Minutemen levies enabled at the town center, and it's more round forts and infantry upgrades. So let's have a look at that. Let's go straight into it. And obviously everyone now sort of become these good old volunteers, which are the highest grade of militiamen that you get in, uh, or militia that you get in the USA Civ. So very, very good. 22 range there with an exceedingly high amount of bonus damage against your good old heavy infantry and light cavalry. So there they are. Let's have a look at the deck, shall we? So the N2 here are going to be the new one. So Texan Forts. Forts now instantly slowly train batches of units for free. And the Al Alamo. So ships 16 Minutemen. When destroyed by enemies, your fortifications, buildings, and walls spawn them. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So we have the Robber Barons. So we have a nice factory wagon here available. We have two Haciendas and the one Hacienda. We've got the old 300. So ships one citizen for each building you have constructed. Very, very nice. That's good because, once again, you're probably going to want this. Um, each building you've constructed, definitely. Now, I don't know if that takes into account buildings that have been destroyed or whether it's just the ones that are still standing. But that's very good, once again, to 
really get your economy back in order once you've done this. So the old 300 might be quite a good option. Liberation March, we've seen that before. Four Culves, two heavy cannons, some sharpshooters. So bringing the good old um, USA troops back. We've got the regulars, we've got the sharpshooters. Now the sharpshooters, I think, have been changed. I think they're not as bad as they used to be. I think they are quite a good option now, whereas before they weren't as good because of their animation. 15 regulars, the heavy fortifications, the Gonzales guns, each existing fort and town center spawns a Napoleon gun. Wow. Let's have a look at that. There it is. Look at that. It's like a Gatling gun. It's like um, it's like a leather cannon. But it does uh, 75 siege damage and three times the bonus, two times to ship. And the bombard here is really good at ships as well. But still, that's kind of crazy. Absolutely crazy little unit there. That's awesome. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, do, 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 do. Where was I? We have two forts. We have the ironclad and a steamer. What is a steamer? So this is a steamer. So 50 range attack. And it fishes. Is it fish? Okay, so it sort of goes at the similar rate to a, a settler here. Very interesting. And it can obviously start generating. Oh, it can actually start training. Okay, so it can actually start training units when it's up against the shore, which is kind of crazy because you could just start sort of going backdooring and, and getting some units out, which is kind of nuts. So that's crazy. Let's have a look just at the final few cards on the bottom here then. We have Texas Army. Imperial upgrades for your barracks units to be slowly researched. So that, yeah, it's a 300% increase. But that's kind of crazy. So you can get those for free. I don't know whether or not if you haven't already got them upgraded, whether you can still. So if you have a unit that's not been upgraded at all. If you go for the Texas Army, does that mean that you'll upgrade everything to Imperial? Enables the Imperial upgrades for your barracks units to be slowly researched for free. I don't think it does. I think it just enables it for Imperial upgrades. Texas Statehood, another state capital wagon. Texas Marines, there we go. That's the one that you might want to go for, upgrading to Marines. Very, very good. High siege damage, nice units. Texas Navy allows the Imperial age stock upgrades to be researched. Very similar to the Texas Army. And finally, Land of Burnett. Inspiring flags gain a much wider area effect and now also improve unit hit points. Very interesting. Okay. So there's a lot there, guys. So very much more all-in, more military focused. And um, I think probably you want to go maybe for a card like this to get a lot of settlers back in to the game. So you can get maybe 15, 20 settlers, maybe more. The minute you revolt, you might want to go for a card like this so you have some economy. Make sure you get a factory out. There's many, many opportunities. Right, guys, there's something I forgot about the Yucatan Revolution in Age 3. Now, there's something you can do where you can revolt a further time into a Mayan Revolution, which is basically when you go to Imperial Age. And we're just going to see where that is now. So we've just revolted, and we're going to have a quick look and see if we can find it. And I think... It's got to be here somewhere. Where is it? Is it this one? Uh, where are some of the upgrades? I don't understand where it is. Ah, there it is. Yeah, of course. The option is here again. So I think that's the only one. So with Yucatan, it's the only one you can pick where you can revolt a second time on top of it. So if we go ahead and do this, we now have access to the final revolution card, which is the Mayor Revolution. Not the, not the Mayor and the Mayor. So the infantry units become Krusov soldiers, cavalry units become uh, Quateros, stables become war huts, and it unlocks the Mayan, Hulken, Javelineers, and war huts. Absolutely insane. So there we go. So we've now fully upgraded. We have a levy at hand. We have native scouts. And of course, there's a lot of things here that have changed. We have the war hut, the strong war hut. So we go ahead and build that. We have access to the uh, Yukato uh, insurgents with the lassoes. We have the Krusov infantry, which look like um, they look like fusiliers. Yeah, they look. Uh, yeah, they're like fusiliers basically. They're sort of heavy infantry with a range resist, I believe. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, two and a half times against heavy cav, high siege, insane. And what else do we have here? We have the Krusov avengers. Which is the... Uh, what is going on there? Yeah, the Krusov Avengers. Which is the stealthy skirmisher that can be seen. So here we go. So this guy is the light skirm unit. 27 
range damage. Absolutely insane. Double damage against heavy infantry. Speed's pretty fast for a heavy infantry as well. Five. Five points. That's kind of crazy. Uh, so what else do we have? And finally, we have the Champion Hulk and Javaliers, which are the exact same sort of picture as the spear unit that you can get with the Aztecs, the Mayan allies. But they are actually a different unit entirely. They look like um, javelin riders. So what have they got here? So... Yeah, I think the I don't know what these guys are good at actually. They're just 16 range. I think they just got good siege. Their hand attack. Oh, they're good against cavalry hand attack. So you kind of want them, kind of want them in uh, hand to hand combat. Really, kind of an unusual unit. High siege damage though. But there you go, guys. So you can't really create any more villagers. Let's have a look at the deck because the deck's going to be the most interesting thing here. And look at this. This is absolutely insane. So this is like a one of a kind, unique situation where you're going to sort of revolt for a second time into the uh, into the Mayans. So let's have a look here. There's quite a few. So we'll go through these very quickly. But we've got the Mayan ceramics here, the, or the Maya ceramics. Um, it ships chests of coin for every shipment sent so far. So that will get you um, a ton of coin, and it increases the build limit for the uh, javelinis. We have the jungle villages. Every house spawns several jungle trees. Interesting. And that adds further build limit to your javelin ears. Everything is building, increasing the build limit for the javelin ears, which is strange. All trading posts generate a steady trickle of XP. We have um, each existing and newly constructed haciendas and town centers spawn three native villages. So once again, this is probably a card you're going to want to go for once you've aged up so you can start to build some sort of economy back because you're not going to have access to any factories in this deck. So the only thing you're really going to have access to is the ability to be able to get villagers, which is one here, for example, ship 12 native villagers and it enables them to be created at the town center. So actually, that's the one you're probably going to want to go for if you're in age five. But I mean, this is super late game. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get in this position on a supremacy game, but for treaty players, this is something that's going to be very, very common you know, sort of going with the uh, with the Maya here. So very interesting. We have the hardwoods. We have the Crusop infantry, which is like the Fusiliers. A very similar sort of picture as well. We have the Maya architecture. All building HP increase. Buildings grant food in addition to experience when built. And everything is increasing the build limit for these Javelineers. So let me just quickly see what the building limit is for these Javelineers. So let me just get one of them out. So it should say somewhere, build limit 2 out of 23 at the moment. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not too sure why um, there is a specific build limit on them. Maybe because they are very cheap. I mean, look at that. That's super cheap unit for a sort of... It's basically like a pikeman that can throw spears. So, you know, I don't know how much usefulness that would have. Because you'd probably want these guys just acting as like your spear unit. But their speed is quite bad though. So they'd have to get like really close up combat with cavalry and only four and a half speed there isn't amazing. But, you know, our heavy infantry has a faster speed than that. Our, our fusilier unit or our Crusop infantry here. So kind of crazy stuff. Let's just have a quick look at the deck further. So we can see here that we've got um, the old uh, Kowaj or, or Kowaj traditions. Ships are tap here for every shipment set so far. I don't even know what a, a tapir is. A tapia. Is it a tapia? This isn't it. Let me see what that actually does. So it's just a 500 food unit. And it does that for every shipment sent so far. So that's insane. So if you've done like 10 to 15 shipments, you hit this bad boy, you're going to have so much food. So that's really, really nice. We've got the old uh, Yelaine traditions, which ch uh, changes gather yield for trees by 500%. That's nuts. The trees last five times as long. We have the light cannon. And I think that's why it also goes well with the champion javelier here. Because these guys cost food and wood. And obviously we've already just seen two cards here that are extremely good for food and wood gatherers. We have four light cannons. That also increases the javelinier. I think all of them increase javelinier build limit. The warrior culture villager attack greatly increased. Wow, that's insane. 700%. Seven times their range attack damage. So they would have 21 attack damage 
and their melee attack would be doubled as well. So that's actually quite significant, like 17 times. That's nothing to be sniffed at. You know, this guy has 16 range. So, you know, if you need to, you can use that. The Chan Santa Cruz, which is the newly found in Maya State, enables Imperial upgrades of barracks units that research notably faster. Okay. So, yeah, so you can go ahead and get this, and this will basically upgrade your infantry here to if we do that there you go so it enables the upgrade of these units to imperial status which is kind of crazy that's 50 percent increase to hp and attack damage but that is a lot to invest i mean actually no sorry that's free isn't it it's just got a gold sign there unless that no that, that did cost some gold didn't it i can't undo it but that definitely cost a significant amount of gold we do have a force coming in uh, so we are just going to deal with it. Probably the best ones are the Rusov guys. Uh, no pop room. We can deal with these. She going to build it? There we go. I think we'll be okay here. There we go, they're retreating now. So uh, let's have a look at some of the uh, further... Um, let me just pause it, sorry. There we go. So let's have a look at another one here. We have Jungle Warfare again, which means that they deal poison damage on attack. The uh, All of your units deal poison damage. That's also in another revolt. I can't remember which one. We've gone through quite a few. The Jungle Infantry or Jungle Warfare, sorry, is definitely one of them. We have a Maya Fortress here. Very interesting. Not too sure what that looks like. Should we uh, go ahead and... Get one of those out. Oh my god, yeah, it looks like... Wow, the Mayan Fortress is amazing. That is amazing. It looks like the... Um, it looks like the Inca from uh, the Wars of Liberty mod. That's the Inca sort of barracks, the war hut from the Wars of Liberty mod. Looks exactly like that, which is absolutely crazy. Okay, so let's have a look. Native warrior combat. We have native treaties. We have blood brothers. We do we do know these ones. Uh, kinship ties. Bonds between you and minor native tribes let you train villagers out of your embassy. Okay. Uh, Pok, ta Pok Tapok. The famous ball game played in Maya ball courts. Uh, increases movement and train speed of your infantry. Okay. So build time reduced and speed increased. That's quite, that's quite significant because this is more of a sieve that is just infantry based. If you want to go for the Myers, it's all infantry based. You have your fusilier type units, your heavy infantry with range resist, which is crazy. You have your skirm type unit and your pike unit, which is your javelineers that also have a ranged ability. So all infantry based, and this will just give you even more um, reason to use them 10% speed and also a build time reduction cult of the talking cross greatly increases your general's hit points advanced scouts can, can now be trained from your town center their combat ability and build limit is enhanced the uh, ambuscada crusop avengers are stronger near natural resources so we've seen that similar sort of card with the um, uh, soldados i think it is the heavy infantry units very similar to the crusop avengers where they have an increase to when they're just standing around natural resources. I don't know how good that is. I'd have to do some testing on it. Look at this British weapon trade, a thousand wood, and you get four rockets and 12 red coats. Now, that's pretty good. That's not bad. That is not bad. Uh, we have a buccaneer fleet here, which is for water, but um, we don't have a drop off point because this isn't a water map. American allies, we know that one. We have the uh, Maria Yukab, ships a priestess with the ability to heal and convert. So we don't actually have the ability to build a community center. And this is a very native heavy deck, and we don't have that choice there at all. So that's interesting. Um, Bandit Gang, a large force of outlaws from all regions join your side. Delivers 12 random units of outlaw type for 2,000 gold. I don't think that's worth it. Poot's Plan, Petard with the ability to use stealth. Oh, these are the stealth petards. Yeah, there you go. Delivers four stealth petards. Absolutely insane. I could definitely see this being used. But unfortunately, there's no other way of actually reusing that. Unless you can maybe get them from the uh, from the units there. But I mean, they are super fast, these Krusov infantry. Look at them go. Absolutely insane. And they are running away now. 
absolutely nuts. So there you go, guys. That is the final revolt. A little sort of secret one, you, you could say, when you go with the uh, Yucatan one in age three. So it's an age three revolt, and then you revolt again. And because you've done two revolts, it means you jump up from age three all the way up to age five for the Imperial. So very interesting. I'm sure this will get a lot of use in treaty games, especially the NR40. But supremacy, probably very unlikely if it goes this late game. But there you go, guys. Right, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video there. I hope you really enjoyed it. A sort of detailed, granular detail again, run through of the revolts and all your options available for the Mexico civilization. And that DLC is going to be hitting on the 1st of December 2021. So make sure you grab yourself a copy. It's four or five pounds, four or five euros, six dollars at the max. And I've got to say, it's definitely worth it. Crazy, huge, versatile sieve that can do tons of different things with a really complex revolt system that is going to require quite a bit of learning. But there's definitely going to be a lot of reward in that learning stage. So hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, let me know in the comments below what you think of these revolts. If there's anything you think is absolutely crazy or broken, make sure to let me know. And of course, if you did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like. I'll catch you in the next stream or the next video. Ooh.